Hello guys, hi again. Uh, welcome to Faces of Press Automation. Today I'm with um, someone from Bogota, Colombia, Carlos Cotrino. Hello, my name is Carlos Cotrino. Um, uh, up to December last year, I used to be a associate professor of electronics engineering at the Universidad Javeriana, Bogota, Colombia. Now I am retired as a professor, but still active in the instrumentation and control field. Um, let's talk about uh, your, your background. So you work at the University of Javeriana. Did you study as well in Javeriana University? Yes, I finished my electronics engineer undergraduate program, program back to 74. I worked at the university for almost 10 years. While doing that, I went to State University of New York at Stony Brook to, to get my master's degree. I mainly work and study control theory. After coming back to Colombia in 81, I switched to a private company working in instrumentation. That company used to be the Fosboro Instruments Company rep in Colombia. I spent almost six years more working in Invensys, the previous owner of Foxboro. Now they are part of the Snyder group of companies. And back to 2005, 2005 I switched again to the university to teach control, instrumentation, automation, something like that. It's a, it's a long, it's a long uh, career with a lot of experience. Almost 40 years working, working of that, almost 30 working in instrumentation and control. I just started with pneumatics equipment. How is the landscape changed from, let's say, 82, that's almost 40 years ago, and today in the same industry? The field instruments have changed a lot because initially there were, there were pneumatic equipment. After that, 80, 85 was analog electronic transmitter. No configuration, no handheld configurator, no communication. The control system was mainly the, the single loop controllers, a bunch of them to control a evaporator or a chain or a boiler. You have to almost 10, 10 single controllers to tune. Okay. Control bars are the same from many years ago. The only chain that had been in the, in the IP converter and the positioner. Some users prefer PLCs, but no, the software was proprietary. There were no open software, no HMI wrapped boxes, but only the, the software that was provided by the maker of the hardware. That okay. was the last in the 80s. I imagine in, at that time in the 80s, there was not so many people with expertise on this kind of controls and systems. So I think you were one of the pioneers bringing this kind of control into process plants in, in Colombia. Really, we, we were very, very few in, in, the, in that time because mainly electronic engineer because most of the key equipment, you, you need to know some assembler language, some, some basic hardware to work on. Uh, the, most of the people was training in pneumatics. All of the people in Ecopetrol, for example, in Barranca Bermeja refinery, they have a, a very large experience, but with pneumatics. The, the, the people who started working with the, the distributed control system were really, really few, and all, almost, all, almost all were electronic engineers. Now the situation is different because other areas also know the technology. But at that time, yes, we, we were very few. We started like field engineers because we need to know the more critical part of this sale is the application. You, you must understand the application to give the right solution. It doesn't matter if you know a lot of instruments, but if you don't know, the, you don't have the experience of the field application, you are going to have problems. The only way was uh, through the fax machine. 